America with your host, Michael and Jacob. Yes, people, big up, big ups. How are you doing? Welcome in to another edition of the Untitled Series. Unfortunately, coming to you live during an interna- international break. But not unfortunately, saw my Greek brethren uh, and got that 4 0 win. Almost 5 0. I don't even know what the final score was, but they were cooking. They were cooking. But how's everybody doing? Welcome in. <laughs> Welcome in. Obviously a very bold statement in the thumbnail. And now that I'm looking at it, it might seem a little dramatic. Uh, But also let me say off the top, happy World Down Syndrome Day to everyone who observes, to everyone who cares, to everyone who knows or doesn't know. 321, um, i.e. March the 21st. I guess in the UK it'd be 21-3. But around the world today is recognized as a day for some awareness down syndrome and the like and you know what's beautiful to see is when my club cares and they do something for it and granted this was last week uh, but very beautiful to see the men and the women's team there greeting and hugging and celebrating and spreading a little love and isn't that what it's all about ladies and gentlemen so i thought i'd start off the episode with some nice love uh, lots of socks things that uh um, let me lower this one whoa let me lower this volume. I was not I was not prepared at all today. But as you can see, um there's, we saw this last week. We did show this where Ainge and his new friend. I guess he was a part of that little trip and then they released the video interspurtingly. But yeah, very nice to see, if I'm honest. Very, very nice to see. Lovely to see. Obviously, this wasn't today because everyone's in international duty, but um, always good to see your club get involved with the local community. Very nice to see. So I wanted to start off the show by saying hello, welcome, and happy World Down Syndrome um, Awareness Day to every single one of you. Hope you are too blessed to be stressed, as am I. Hope y'all are doing well. There's a poll in the chat. 31 votes so far says, uh, do you have hope in the Scott Munn and company aligning with Ainge? And I thought that this would be an interesting question to ask today because um, because of some things that I've seen. But what is that? Oh, my goodness. Look at this. This is what I just I opened. Oh, I'm not sharing that anymore. There you go. I opened Twitter, and this is what I saw. I don't know if y'all can see that. <laughs> it's uh, Harith Kale, which is, and then now the other one is Harry Kane mixed with Harry Maguire. Very interesting photo there. Let's just leave that up there while I continue to do the the business part of this adventure. 33 votes uh, with the very fun question. Uh, do you have hope in Scott Munn and company aligning with Ainge? Look, I don't know if that even makes sense. That's why I put the last option. I don't understand the question because I'm reading it. I'm like, shit, I don't even know if I understand what the hell you're asking me there. But... 35% says they're going to get it right. It will need time. 26% says I'm willing to be patient for it. And 24% says nothing will work with Levy there. I thought it was interesting. I was reading some of the quotes that came from uh, Scott Munn. I believe it was Mr. Munn. He, um, well, this right here, basically him working with Ainge. They're both Australian talking about the A-League a little bit. Um, and just their relationship. I thought it would be an interesting conversation uh, to have to see, you know, it is international break. Rather than just play FIFA this afternoon, I thought I would actually do a show. So there we go. Um, Let's say hello to the chat. Let's see how everybody's doing in the house. Big up to Richard Evans, first one in the house, and they're a Chelsea fan, liking on the channel. Love to see that. Big up, Richard Evans. Hope you're well. Says like secured. Big up to Lisa. How are you doing? Buenos tardes to Lisa out there in Mexico. Chang, how you doing, my man? Chang says a very good Friday. 
because he's a they're they live in the future out there them and the australian folks they're out there march 22nd this is a very good friday morning to you mr Walraven, and the live viewers in the chat or on playback although it's a spursless weekend lots to be positive about going into next weekend against luton i do agree i do agree but no need to even we, we don't even need to think about luton because quite frankly these players got random international duty matches to attend to for whatever reason um i don't really like it if i'm honest usa kicks off in about 15 minutes i thought about doing a watch along for that and i was like fuck that <laughs> i already dropped the f-bomb 10 minutes in seven minutes in rather i'm uh, just bro greg burhalter's a fraud he is the american version of gareth southgate if that helps big up nate pie and big up to the entire pie family hope you are doing well and good morning I believe you said you're out in Melbourne. I, I don't know if there's a time difference between Melbourne and your home, Nate, and the Pie family. But hope you all are enjoying yourself. Big up Amir says, big up Jacob and everyone in the chat. Big up Amir, buddy. Hope you're doing well. The aristocratic Tottenham fan says, realistic fans like myself are looking closely for the moment when the media puppets turn on Ainge the same way they turned on Conte. Okay, <laughs> I hey, keep looking closely at that moment, I guess. I really don't know how to respond to this comment. Seems kind of like a pent-up emotion about how people treated Conte. I mean, I think the two situations are a little bit different, right, between Ainge and Antonio Conte, personally. I think the situations are a little bit different, in my opinion. But, hey, it is what it is. Also, I never called you a happy clapper. I recommend you stop putting word into my mouth. Um, hey, yo, I would never put anything into another man's mouth. That is Arteta. That is Salt Bay. That ain't me. So, hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo on that. I'm never putting nothing in your mouth. Who the fuck are you? David Calvino, Evening Jacob and Chat. Big up, David. How you doing? Yanis in the house. Big up, Jacob and Chat. Can we get an update on Chewy, please? Yanis update on chewy um i believe chewy's getting of that age he's having a little trouble with his containing his faculties if you know what i mean um the other day he's he was having he was having some trouble so he's out on the patio so that way he doesn't continue to make it dirtier in here and we're looking at what we got to do next we're looking at um we're looking at our options here so no real update on Chewy other than he, he can't make the show, unfortunately. He's big, he's a stinky dog right now. But he is good. I take him on walks twice a day, so um he is healthy. It's just other than the fact he just can't he just can't kinda hold it in. So yeah, it's just a natural progression of life, I suppose. Yanis, um it is pretty very, very sad, if I'm honest. It is very, very sad. Richie B uh evening folks big up richie b hope you're doing well uh says in regards to the poll surely it's way too early to call yet yeah surely but don't call me surely i would also say um that's why i put do you have hope because there's no real factual evidence to base things off of other than maybe what we saw in the summer but i don't know how aligned they were in philosophies in the summer but i would hope that they are more aligned in philosophies at this point Everything will change. 12, 5, 24. Interesting. Ian Satwick, how you doing? Big up Ian Satwick. How are you? Novagen's in the house. Hello, Novagen. Hello to Panda Ball. Yo, all the way to the East Coast. Hope you're doing well. Sleepy Mocha. Hey, hope no one here is stealing money from Sonny to pay off their gambling debts. What does that even mean? Who's stealing money from Sonny? I don't know who's doing that. I ain't heard that story. Send me the link. Donovan. I'm excited for Bergvall. He looks silky sexy. Oh. Um, I haven't seen much other than the highlights that be coming out. Because obviously, I don't know where the hell I'm going to find some Norwegian football. I don't know where. I actually know where he's playing. Um, hey. Keep on keeping on, you know. Love the videos from the club. Yes, Lisa. Those are some great videos. I do. I have been enjoying myself on uh, this. Trust me, 21 Awareness Day. Big up. Hello, OTC. 
Hello. Ainge in. Enough said. There you are. But it's not just Ainge that has hands in bringing players to the club. It, it, it's parse, mostly him in regards to you know, selling something to the player. But these guys who are working the phones, Scott Munns, his dude to Anderson, something Anderson, and then the other dude, and then there's another dude. There's a bunch of dudes. Um, it's, you know, a lot of people, a lot of moving parts. He needs some milk. <laughs> Big up, Ron. We could always use some. You can always use some milk. Cube says you're not watching U.S. Men's National Team versus Jamaica versus Jamaica. Um, no, I'm not. It starts in what? Two minutes? No, ten minutes. It starts in ten minutes from now. I mean, I'll probably put it on and just keep it down here, and I'll 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 watch along. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna invest myself as a fan until Burhalter's gone. This man kicks his wife in the stomach, and they're like, "No, oh, that's fine," because his brother works for the for the U.S. Soccer Federation. I, to me, that's just fraudulent. And Burhalter's fraudulent. How do we select him as our manager twice? Bro, he can't get fired. Shitty performances, underutilizing talent, not calling up the right players. The fact that Ricardo Pepe didn't get called to the World Cup was a fraudulent move on his end. But that's neither here nor there. My point is, he's fraudulent on the pitch. He's fraudulent off the pitch, like I aforementioned, kicking his wife in the stomach and texting people about it. That's not something you do. But we'll still give him a fucking job. So I don't really care what happens. I do like to see how our young men are doing. Um, obviously, I keep close eye on Anthony Robinson and uh, Chris Richards. Ricardo Pepe is my, my number one. He's an El Chuco native. Shout out to El Chuco. Moondog. Hey, big up Moondog. <laughs> Evening, Jacob. I see Skip had a master class. Big up Moondog. Uh, if you're wondering what this is in regards to, um, I played, I did a FIFA episode. I've been doing FIFA episodes. Ange Postacoglu, he got his face scanned into the game. So I've been doing Ange Postacoglu career mode. And I'm going to run things if, if Daniel Levy wasn't there, but it was Jacob. And Ange Postacoglu, and hey, we're cooking. We're absolutely cooking in the season, if you care. Um, but yes, I did sell Skip to Chelsea for around twenty million U.S. dollars. Sold him for twenty mil to Chelsea, and then I played Chelsea on yesterday's episode, and he was kicking my ass. I played on uh, legendary mode, which is a very, very hard mode, I must admit. But obviously, I'm just killing it. But Skip. Skip was cooking me. He literally in his half was winning the ball. In my half, he was winning the ball. He scored a goal. And it wasn't until Oliver Skip got substituted out by Pochettino, the fraud. Um, once he substituted Skip out, then I was able to equalize with Young Min's son. And the, the match ended 1-1. So Oliver Skip, yeah, he was he was playing like... Oliver Zidane last night. That's the best way I could put it. Big up, Moondog. Appreciate you becoming uh, the first sponsor of tonight's show. How you doing? <laughs> OTC freshly banned from the Hotspur Hippie channel. Oh, you made the hippie mad. You did something wrong, my friend. I don't know how you make the hippie mad. How you do that? That actually, that takes a little bit of skill. Big up, Stefan. How you doing, Stefan? Big up, Jacob, and the people in the chat. Debating going to the Spurs v. Luton game. But I'd need to get a ticket from a third-party website. 90 bloody quid. At least I'd see some goals. Um, You know what I would say to that? I would say spend the 90 quid. Go to the game. It's a home game. 90, 90 bucks ain't that bad for a ticket, if you think about it. And I mean, this is from my American standpoint where ticket prices are absolutely ridiculous. Ticket prices here are astonishingly high. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, I would spend 90 right now. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I would spend 90 bucks right now to go see Tottenham versus Luton. I'd spend 190. I hear you. We always have hope, right? That's what it is. There's some hope. It is a little bit too early to tell. So you're not wrong, Richie, by saying it's a little, early. obviously we've, we've had two windows um, where Ainge has really been like, I'm not paying attention to that. That's someone else's job. Just give me my things. And I think that that's an interesting approach. But um, 
for me, I've always said here on the channel, Kuva, Paul, that they've been on the channel. They've all agreed. We've all said the same thing. At least four windows until I start saying, now do something with it, Ange Postacoglu. Um, that's at least where I stand with it. I feel pretty, that's a pretty good patience. That's a pretty good pay. That's this year. And after January of next year, when we finish January next year, I'll say, okay, Ainge, you got your pieces. Hopefully, if we did the right things, uh, what I'm hoping we'll do. But what is this? Someone sent me a video. Let me see what this is. <laughs> oh, I've seen this. I've seen this. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can share this. This is actually kind of funny. Window. There it is. <laughs> All right, I'm going to play that in a second. Ron, I see what you sent me. It's pretty funny. Um, Let's see here. But in regards, yeah, back to, to Ainge and Scott and the, the fuckers and, the, you know, making those decisions. I really just want to see um, us go in any direction. And we've started that. <coughs> Excuse me. We started that. I just want to see a continuation and, and a continued improvement. There's something that Sean from Spurs Talk Show says, and I really like the I really like the way he says it. Like, if we're really gonna catch up to Man City, Liverpool, even the fuckers down the street, if we're gonna catch up, they're ahead of us in their race, right? They they they've been driving this car for a minute. Man, I think he said Man City's been driving at a hundred, and we're just now going about sixty. Well, if he's going 100 and we're going 60, the gap is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. But, you know, if we speed up a little bit, they slow down a little bit. That's how you end up catching up in a race. So there's always the hope. But then again, they say it's the hope that kills you. We'll find out. We'll find out in due time. <clears throat> yeah, he goes on a walk two twice a day. We went on a family walk this morning, and I'll take him on again after dinner. Uh, fuck YouTube says, hope Chewy is better soon. I do too, man. I do too. He's just, it's, he's having trouble holding his water, you know. Referring to Otani. What are you talking about? You talking about a baseball player? Hello. <clears throat> I don't know what this says. If there's someone in uh, Zapur, I know Zapur, Zapur could read this. Maybe someone else in the chat can read this. How are you doing? Big up. Welcome to the channel. Faz Radfar. Big up, Jacob. Hope you're well. Big up, Faz. Hope you are well as well, my friend. Big up to Ren. Good morning. Says big up crew. Fully coys. Come on, Ren. Yes, we are. Um, he's just getting older. Chewie's just getting older. You know, they say and dogs getting older and all that. Um, I don't know what this says either. Should I just like... Can I try and cop Google Translate? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe I'll Google Translate this. Let's see. This is a long message, so I'm, you're trying to tell me something with this. I'm going to say... Mm -mm. Sun Hyung Min scores Thailand World Cup qualifier. That's what that says. Look at us. We're, we're fucking bilingual. <coughs> we are bilingual out here. <clears throat> Start talking about Chewy, and all of a sudden I get a little mm -mm in my throat. Yeah, big up Chewy every single time. Well, big up. Yes, he did score in the Thailand World. Was that the World Cup qualifier that he was playing? I didn't know that that's the games that they were playing, but I did see. I woke up to a bunch of notifications that Sun scored, and that's what I did. The anti-Ainge rhetoric is legit hit clickbait for content's sake. Losers. Lou Zahur is what I would say to that, Ren. Absolutely. Brendan Johnson scored versus Finland. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I saw that. It was a it was a tap in. Uh, that was as tap in as you can as you could get. Uh, big up Panda Ball. Big up. Sleepy Mocha says it was a bad joke. There was a story about Otani. He either paid an illegal bookie four million to pay his translator's gambling debts, or that the translator stole his money. Oh, uh, okay. I see what you're saying now. I smell what you're stepping in. Uh, uh, uh. 
Big up, Stefan. Is Ainge's cough in the game? No, it is not. Ainge's cough is not in the game. I had a FIFA nightmare the other night. Went full on Todd Bowley and got sacked in preseason for signing too many players. Oh, my God. I didn't know you could do that. Uh, big up, JC. How you doing? Hey, Jacob. How you doing? Big, big up. FIFA is not real, but when I play it, it is it is real in a computer-generated sense. As he missed a sitter, he did. He did miss that sitter. We fucked it up. I specifically fucked it up. <laughs> big up, internet guy. You're kind of right. 90 quid is 113 US dollars plus tax. I would do it. I'm still doing it, my friend. Give me the 90 quid ticket. I will do it. Big up, Jacob. Wah, wah. Big up, Alexandra Castro. Wah, wah to you as well. Chill day today. Only one job left. Get in Friday. We're almost there, baby. We are almost there. And I was like, man, if I keep doing FIFA streams, people are going to start unsubscribing to this channel. I can't just keep doing FIFA streams, even though I'm bored as hell. I enjoyed watching Greece. I watched about 80 minutes of that. We were kicking their ass. How many players do you think will shift on who in the summer? And who? How many, how many players do you think will shift and who in the summer? Hmm. Who? That's a great question. Everyone's always asking who. Like a bunch of owls out here. Jacob, how about U.S. Jamaica watch long? Yeah, it did just kick off. Let me go ahead and pull that up so I've got it privy to my eyes. Why not? Should we? Should we watch a little bit of this? Yeah, we're 15 seconds in. The game's already kicked off. I don't even know who the fuck is starting. I don't really care. Jamaica have a throw in here. <laughs> Am I about to pivot into a USA Jamaica watch along? No way. I can't do it. Oh, oh, Jamaica, oh, it's a goal, Jamaica. Wow, I tuned in and Jamaica just scored on our head top. Dunked. <laughs> I turned it on and they scored. Oh, Jamaica just dunked on us. Leon Bailey was shitting all over. Are they at AT&T Stadium? Or is this, is, is this, I think this is AT&T Stadium. I, I know, I recognize that that field level suite i've been in there yeah this is at&t saying come on hey that's the at&t stadium how nice uh if i still worked for cowboys i could be there right now they got dunked on bro a throw in who was that was that anthony robinson what a bozo i don't know who that was i need to see who was starting but Joe Scally, <laughs> Scally Wag, he just got dunked on. I'm going to star this, Richie. We'll come back to it. Big up, Drunk Vigo. How you doing? How you doing? Saw a lot of unhappy Spurs fans last season. Things have improved a lot, but Chelsea fans are a different level. Have you heard of the noises and stickers coming from Chelsea fans? You guys were nice. I support it. If you feel strongly about something, do it enough. Like, like do something about it. You know what I mean? And and I feel like that's kind of the problem is like a lot of people feel some way, but they're reluctant to speak up and do anything about it. I could see why people are making noises and putting stickers and shit like that's going to get people's attention. And it has. It worked. So to the protesters at Chelsea, obviously, I, I would say that it's it's working. It's clearly working. Man City been riding at 115. A hey, fuck them. Daniela Zito, hello, Jacob. I watched Italy's game versus Venezuela where Italy won 1 2. Yudogi played pretty well. Vicario was on the bench as Donnarumma started instead. Oh, well, Donnarumma's going to start. We always knew that, right? Hey, I need to tune into Italy. <laughs> I, for, I always forget we got two Italians on our team still. That's crazy. <clears throat> Big up, Taka. How you doing? Big up, Taka. Uh, big up Remy. The Korean said Son Hyung Min scored one goal in the world. Yep, yep, it did. Big up Remy. Appreciate you translating. I did see it too late though, unfortunately. What well, time's episode five? I might do it late tonight, Taka. I may do it late tonight or tomorrow. Late tonight or tomorrow. Actually, speaking of tomorrow, I may, I may have y'all. Y'all may or may not like it, but tomorrow I'm doing something different. I'm gonna start doing a rival show. At least for this international break, anyway. I'm going to have some cool content creators who support other clubs. USA with a shot goes over the goal. I'm going to have some I'm going to have some uh, content creators from other clubs. I'm going to have them on and have them talk to us about Spurs and get 
the views from the rivals standpoint and how they see Spurs, how they see Ainge, and basically I'm just going to question them and we'll just have a good time. So, again, I'm only going to invite some cool people. Um, I only work with cool people. You know that. You know how I roll. Come on now. Um, but that's going to be tomorrow. And I think tomorrow I'm going to start with Arsenal because why not? Why not start with Arsenal? Um, there we go. I'll put that there. Let me update this layout. Because guess what? There's a guest. We've got a guest in the house. I'm working on. Let me get this layout out. Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Welcome, Queen Ellie. Welcome, Jacob. How are you doing? Hello. <laughs> I'm fantastic. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. I love your Romero shirt. It's very cool in that sort of, it's sort of a grayish taupe. It's the, uh, <laughs> the our third kit. The I call yeah. them the cappuccino kits. They kind of look brown, but then sometimes they kind of look gray. I don't know. It's kind of fun. Yeah. You yeah. don't know. What kind of anyway, question whatever is color it is, it's the first shirt and it's perfect. Come on. Yeah, hey, I agree. <laughs> Except for last year's away kit. Those were far from it. But Ellie, yeah. <laughs> hello. Well, so good to have you on the channel again. How and are you doing this week? I'm all, I'm all right. I'm upstairs because my daughter Angela's downstairs. I've been looking after her. How's she doing? Been, she well, she's all up? right. She's getting twinges still because she's had a lot cut out of her. <laughs> mm. She's been sliced and diced, Jacob. But... You know, she's a strong girl, and I said to her, look, Jacob wants me to go on. And she goes, all right, then, go on, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> hey, big up, Angela. Appreciate you being patient. Yeah. Ellie, were you watching the Grease game? They won 5-0. I, I, I had to stop watching because I had a, a, a session with my son, but I stopped watching at 4-0. It was about 70 minutes in, 70, 80 minutes, something like that. Yeah, they're not a bad Did team. you watch Greece win 5-0? Now they just I win one more time, and they qualify for the Euros. They're in the playoffs. No, I'm not going to lie. I didn't watch it because I've been watching Gogglebox, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we watched we watched a few other things with Angela. So I said, "Look, this is mum and daughter time, right?" And uh, then then I get a reprieve with you. You see, because if I didn't do that, she'll say, oh. "She'll throw that teenage." <laughs> she's not even a teenager; she's double teenager. <laughs> oh but, man. But we, hey, Ellie, I'm right, just going to say, yeah. the Greek boys were doing you proud. They, it was um, Kazakhstan. I couldn't tell you one player from Kazakhstan. But 5-0, no. that's pretty comp. Uh, it it don't good. matter who your opponent is. You can only beat who it's in front of you. Yeah, and it looks like next they're going to have Georgia. Yeah, They beat Georgia. Good. They're yeah. into the playoffs. Or they're Georgia's into the Euros. Gonna a, Georgia's going to be a, a tougher game than Kazakhstan. Oh, yeah. But yeah, for I sure. I just wanted to tell you, right, Jacob, my husband is watching, he just finished watching Judas Priest. I don't know if you like that sort of music, but... I've he heard to, of it. Well, Judas Priest, they're a British band, right? From I think they're from Birmingham. And um, his favourite band, Uriah Heep, on, and a band called Saxon. They're all British bands. And he took my future son-in-law, who's a Chelsea fan, with him. And he hates that sort of music. <laughs> but it was like a, um, he hasn't got any sons because I never bestowed him a son. I've got three daughters. So it was like now bonding. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. No, I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Yeah. Oh, big up. <laughs> um, CQ, Big up everybody in the chat. I'm trying to not ignore y'all, but also now have a guest, so I'm also trying to not ignore my guests. Yeah. Like a, no, and then re, re, I've re, now re, also re, got USA versus Jamaica as I'm keeping up with it. Um, and as oh, soon as I turned that. it on, Ellie, 45 sec, 45 business seconds maybe. It was about yeah. 30 seconds really. Uh, Jamaica score. So how about oh, that? Yeah. I tuned in at the right time. Yeah. Um, and Poland won five one as well tonight. Bloody hell. And Israel lost 4 1 to Iceland. Whoa. There's I didn't even actually talk. look at this. Should, should I pull up the results? Let me do that. Yeah, like, I've got them that. in front of me now. Uh, Wales beat Finland 4 1. Um, Bosnia Herzegovina lost to Ukraine 2 1. Um, Greece beat Kazakhstan 5 0. Um, Lithuania yeah, beat 
brought yeah, up. Yeah, they did. But that's in the UEFA Nations League, that one. And these are the Euro 2024 qualifications. Yeah, because I think Greece are in Ireland's group, aren't they? So, Ellie, what has happened, Greece finished third behind Netherlands. It was France, Netherlands, Greece, and then Ireland and, and someone else. And they finished oh, third. Right. So now what happens is them and, and, and all the other third places, they're all in different pools. And there's yeah. three pools of four teams. I was reading it up. I was reading up on it this morning before the game started. And it's there's basically Greece, Kazakhstan, Georgia, and Luxembourg. They were in a group. And then those four teams, two are going to play each other. That's what happened today. Greece played Kazakhstan. And Georgia played Luxembourg. Now Greece and Georgia advance in a single elimination, and they're wow. going to play each other. And the winner of that goes into a group. I'm not sure what group, but a group. They basically qualify for the Euros. And so yeah. then there's another group of Bosnia, Herzegovina, Ukraine, Israel, and Iceland. They all wow. same thing. And there's going to be yeah. and the winner. And so there's out of the winner out of those three groups are all going to be placed into different groups in the Euros. So this wow. is like a playoff system. And I think it's the first time they've ever done that, if I'm not wrong. Oh, right. Okay. That sounds really interesting. I was looking at the Greek scorers, Basiktas, the Dimitris Belgas, Vandelis Hatsudiakis, so it's my third <laughs> <laughs> and Fodis. You are, Fodis means light in Greek. Fodor. You must know that from your wife, I presume. Uh, you are that because the I, the I, there's no J in the Greek alphabet. You must know that, and there's no G in the Greek alphabet either. So, Fodis yep. Uanadis and Dagi Gostas. No, sorry, I don't know what his first name is, but his surname's Kubulis. That's a good name, Kubelis. <laughs> Some Greek names are funny, man. <laughs> but no, what, what was what was the funniest was i i had a uh i had a i had a greek stream on i was watching it and so the broadcaster was speaking greek and it was just like it was it, i uh when they speak <laughs> greek really fast it almost sounds like spanish and i thought i yeah. was crazy but my wife agreed with me when the I greeks can't... get speaking real fast it really sounds similar to spanish it does i i just can't understand the proper proper grammatical greek when they speak it fast i can get bits and i make up the sentence with the bits i know and then i gel mm. it all together but they talk so fast it's hard to follow it and they use new words that i the cypriots speak a different greek it's like a broken greek it's not a proper grammatical greek in cyprus mm. but there are yeah. cypriot people who do speak the proper grammatical greek anyway enough of that let's get back to spurs <laughs> yeah dyt says did davy score he did but i'm looking and i guess it must have got ruled off brennan johnson scored in the wales 4-1 win over finland so yeah, wales will effectively play poland and the winner of that will qualify for the euros iceland yeah. and ukraine will play each other the winner of that will play each other uh, we'll we'll get into the group and then Greece versus Georgia. So that's going to be a big game, and I think it's about in five days on the twenty sixth. I might do a watch along for that. I don't know yet. That'll be good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, do a watch along. I love your watch along. Watch -along. They're so entertaining. But I usually I'll even I'll even wear the Greece shirt that I bought about six years ago, and it's <laughs> way too tight on me now. It, <laughs> but it's a it's a Greek it's a a replica of the Greek jersey of that year, twenty eighteen. Oh. I believe it was. Yeah, 2018. But 2004, yeah. they won the Euros, beating Portugal. Yeah. yeah. Less so that forget. was very good. But you know what? The, the Cypriot Greeks in London became Greek from Greece. <laughs> 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 we did. We all said we're Greek from Greece. <laughs> but they're, they're Greek like us. But, you know, a lot of Greeks from Greece, um, they're more aristocratic than the Cypriot. The Cypriots are quite down to a... Uh... It's interesting you say aristocratic. We have an aristocratic Tottenham fan in the chat. Okay. That, that, that's at least their, their screen name. I don't know if they're aristocratic <laughs> at all. I don't know who they are. Um, USA team unraveling. What did I miss? Uh, it's still 1-0. I'm on USA. What's going on? It's still 1-0. Um, 
Yeah, so they'll look, they'll equalize, don't worry. I got oh. a question saved here from Richie B. This is a good little yeah. point to get us back to speaking about Tottenham, at least get my mind back on Tottenham rather than because I, I started talking about Greece, and then I started reminiscing about the times in Greece. Oh, the beaches, the sands with the little rocks instead of sand. They're like little tiny rocks. Oh, oh, I hate beaches because I don't hate beaches, but I don't like sand in my shoes and in my butt crack. And <laughs> when you go to any beach, like, I mean, shout out Mexico beaches, but my when I used to do those work trips on the Mexican beaches, like I would get sand in every orifice and I hated it. But in Greece, yeah. they're little tiny rocks. It is so beautiful and the water is crystal clear there's not some fat retired guy pissing in it it's fantastic um yeah. oh my god you know what just yeah, before ahead. you ask that question right so yeah, yeah, yeah. so sweden got battered by portugal 5-2 and <laughs> Gel Polina was in portugal's team <laughs> and dijan kolosevsky got battered again <laughs> <laughs> he must be, he's having a bad week, that Dijan Kulisevsky. He can't yeah. get a break. But that Victor Burekis, Burekis, the one who was at Coventry, he scored for Sweden again. It's a very good Oh, he's, uh, he's at Sporting, right? Yeah, he's at Sporting, man. How, do, how does he have such a Greek name and he's not Greek? I don't understand. I know. Maybe he's got he's got some sort of Greek in him. You never know. No, well, maybe. These young um, his parents are from Macedonia. Did you know that? Yeah, he said that his parents were Macedonian. Yeah, that, they're Macedonian. That letter that he wrote to the fans. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, work work trip to Mexican beaches. What was your job? It was when I worked for the Dallas Cowboys once a year. Me and the rest of and a couple other video members, we would go to various beaches in Mexico. One time we went to the Caribbean. Well, two times we went to the Caribbean. Um, the other three times I went, so I did it five times total. Uh, yeah. We would go do, there's a yearly calendar shoot with all the cheerleaders, Ellie. We go with all the cheerleaders down to the beaches of Mexico and yeah, I would right. video them or hold a boom mic to capture sound. And that was my job. I know why for you about... were videoing the cheerleaders. I, 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 they they made boy. me. I, it was, I was contractually obligated. I'll put it that way. That I, was the best I threw job my hands and I said, "Honey, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to do this, but they're making me, you know." So, um, yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, I'll tell you what, though, it was a lot of hard work. As joking and everything about it, it's a lot of hard work. And Balogun just missed a chance. Uh, to equalize, what a loser. What a loser. <laughs> oh, my but God. Anyway, enough reminiscing yeah. about the Mexican beaches and yeah. getting paid to go to a beach is crazy. But yeah. Richie says, how many players do you think we're going to shift on and who in the summer? Ellie, give me your first two people that you would like to see shifted in the summer. I mean, this has obviously been I... an easy question over the years because it's Dyer, Davies. Who else? Who else? Um, I would say... But... Where things may have changed for a lot of people, Ellie. I want to know where you're at with this. I would say um, not on Belly, the first one. Mm, just a waste you of want space. to see him go permanently Beautiful somewhere. Talent right? that doesn't use it. So what's the point? Um, and then the next one, it's a bit harder. Um, I would say Lo Celso <laughs> because his heart's not at the club. You can see it. He's very lethargic. He doesn't look interested. That's my opinion, but it, I can. The body language is not right for me. You know, he he just doesn't look like he wants to be at the club. Yeah, I see. Like he, I... Like he doesn't get played, does he? Hardly ever. Do you think your <laughs> cubed and I are thinking the same thing? What about your husband? Now there was an interesting revelation. <laughs> Per stats, and I'm not the biggest stat guy, and there's a lot a lot of really cool services out there you could use to get your stats. Um, yeah. But but apparently, you know, people going on, we need this monster number six in the summer, uh, Paulina, Kimmich, uh, Huda, Huda, Wada, Wada. And when you look at the numbers in the European top five leagues in the last few years, all the stats that you would like the position to be very high in, Pierre Mio Hoybier is consistent in being in all of them. So then, I I, Ali, you, are you shifting Hoybier in the summer? 
I tell everybody Hoybier is a good player, but they just see the mistakes that he makes. But all players make mistakes. It's just they, you know what it is. Is they some people jump on the bandwagon over Hoybier and just think all these other people don't like him, so we won't like him, right? So, but he's he's got a very good following, and I love him. I think I think he plays with his heart and soul. It's not the He's not the greatest footballer. He's not the worst footballer. But he, he plays with intention. Do you see when he came on with Fulham with Bentecourt? you see this comment I have up? No, not yet. I can't see the comments. What does it say? Stefan, Stefan, YouTube chat member says, I swear to God if I have to watch another season of Hoybier. <laughs> <laughs> no, do, you know, do you know what it is, right? I uh, think that's unfair. Poor guy. I think that's unfair. I think it's unfair, right? Because right, he's the captain the... of his country. You know, some people yeah. make a whole and living played... at a average club for that. You know, I know. But the thing is, um, Jacob, right? He came on against Fulham with Bentancourt, and those two together in a two-man midfield with Conte for his second season, he was mm. fabulous, right? And now he's been dropped to the bench. What do you expect the player to do? He comes on, he's professional, but you have to get into the game. And most of the time that he's come on is because we've been um, losing a game. Yeah, he hardly ever comes on like with 15, 20, 25 minutes to go. When there's about, when we're winning, he might come on with five or 10 minutes to go just to give him a little run out. But he's a mm. professional. He comes on, he was fantastic against Fulham. We created five chances when Bentancourt and, and Hoybier came on. And previously, we'd only created four chances for the whole of the match. And they were only on for 15 minutes, but they were fighting a losing battle because we were 3-0 down already. So I, mm. I like him. I'm, I'm never going to sway from that. I don't care what anybody says. I think he's a good player and he's a good professional who will give give his all you know and there's players like Nodon Belli who's got masses more talent than Boy Pierre and what do you get from him nothing you see so I, I always like I always like the underdog as well I like the underdog Jacob you know somebody who's always been the only player I wouldn't who was an underdog was Dyer I didn't like him because he made too many mistakes that's fair. That's what, I think that's, that's a fair. Party political <laughs> broadcast on behalf of Pierre <laughs> I think a lot of people just are really frustrated with his lack of pace. I think is what it is. Yeah, and is, is. He, doesn't he doesn't really do have it. that quick first step. He don't really no, got that. He, that is, got he has a good long pass, but sometimes yeah. that the, the medium to short passing could be a little poo poo. A little farty. Um, I call it farty, like, Ellie. Like like last week versus Fulham, <laughs> we were f just our third and fourth balls were all just fart passes, and it wasn't good enough. It was actually quite poor, and yeah, to I me, that's that. why we ended up suffering. Um, he's he's passing is very accurate. I'll give you that because he's passing is in the ninety percent percentile, so he is good at passing. But the thing is, he's more than a passer. He he he's a very good communicator. He gets all they, he gets the team organized. As soon as he came on, you must have noticed, right? We were more organized and we got into the game a lot more, and we had the ball a lot more, and we created a lot more chances as well. So mm. experience counts in this league, you know. And I I personally think he should have started that game. Just Halinha was bossing that midfield. Right, and Basuma went missing. He was they they're playing him in the defensive midfield role, which I don't think suits him. I think he's more of an attacking midfielder, not a defense. Although he's played that all his life, I don't think it suits him because now teams are pressing us right really high up, and he panics and he does a bad ball. Right, but if he's higher up and you lose the ball, you've got time to recover. But he's very good at driving with the ball through the middle. Uh, he did. I said to um, who was it the other day? I was on another stream, and uh, I said against Sheffield United, he was the reason why we won that match because he got us going. But we need Kasuma to get us going. We can't have him 
as a deep lying defensive midfielder. That wastes his talent. He's suffering yeah. back there. I think. I mean, it's an interesting conversation. For me, I, I feel like it's time for Hoybier to go somewhere else. And Hoybier, if he is the profile of player anyway. that we need, we just got to get a better version of him. Yeah. Now, speaking of better versions of him, you know, our our boy Fabrizio, which, by the way, I saw some really, how do I say, like, disheartening stuff? Not yeah, disheartening. Yeah. Um, but apparently yeah. his agency is, like, shipping out invoices like for six thousand pounds um he'll tweet about your your young player to generate a higher like sale right basically they're selling it like you if you you know purchase this program through our agency fabrizio will start tweeting and talking about your kids you know the kids that you're i, I think i can't remember if it was like a in norway it was some like really small club and they the guy was like i've never seen an agency contact me if i want pr for my player like that's actually weird and he's supposed to be a oh. journalist when he's actually like trying to <laughs> if you spend money i'll say your player is the next hottest thing and so and so is looking at him so you know what i mean oh, it just seemed really disingenuous and i saw that <laughs> but speaking of things i saw with him uh, i got sent this video <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> and it's expressions. You know expressions, right? Yeah, of course I do. I've met him as well. Met uh, him is, he as funny, is he as funny so, in real so, life? Right. So against Fulham uh, this season, I saw him. And I, was it last season or this? I can't. I think it was last season, actually. I tapped him on the back and I said, hello, expressions. How are you doing? And he was really nice. He goes, all right, love. Do you want a picture with me? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like really confident but not cocky you know like yeah. he hasn't got arrogance and he sits three seats away from my brother <laughs> oh so he's right there hey yeah. hey speaking of good dudes ellie we got amd the newest moderator on the channel dropping a really? hundred dollar super chat big up wow. big up for that my friend wow very very Nice. very very generous of you my friend wow becoming a major sponsor of tonight's show amd i appreciate that it says big up jay you're a good dude keep hustling brother this is an arsenal fan maybe he dropped a hundred dollar super chat so it was arsenal red and i'd leave it on my <laughs> um there's not a lot of red on this channel at all um no. but you know what it's such a generous donation i don't mind leaving it on uh I don't mind leaving it up for a good while, man. I appreciate that, AMD, the newest, latest moderator to the channel. I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, thank you so much for your donation, your contribution. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, wow. I oh, know. It's very, 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 very my, generous. Thank my, you so much. My husband bought me this red love heart with some diamante in it for Valentine's. Oh. And I, I haven't worn it because it's red. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you don't look, but he's he, he's QPR, so he, he shouldn't yeah. be buying red. Do you know he's what about I mean? the blue and white, isn't he? I know. It's about the What's blue. What's going on? He's, they're the super hoops, are, He calls them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, they, uh, FC Dallas does the same thing. Like we have hoops, and their mascot it's a big Texas Longhorn, and oh, right. his name is his name is Hooper. <laughs> that's good. And and that's their that's like their thing is they they have they do the hoops on their shirt also. But it's yeah. but they do red, white, and blue. Uh, but big up AMD, man. I do appreciate that okay. chat. I'll leave that up for a good little bit. Uh, thank you so much. That's very, very generous of you. Very, very generous. The only red you're going to see on this channel for some time. But Ellie, yes. I've got this. That's, my name. <laughs> that's your name, and I will wear it out. But <laughs> this is expressions with a little chat uh, with Fabrizio Romano. So let's take a listen. <laughs> I can't hear him though, Jacob. What's that? I can't hear what he's saying. Oh shit! Can no one hear it? I can't hear it, but maybe. I wonder if the chat can't hear it either. Because if yeah. you can't hear it, I would assume. I would assume. Just ask the chat. Can 
Yeah, they can't yeah, Phil, Phil says he can't hear anything either. Yeah. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. So all right, let me like sort this. So yeah, everyone's this. saying no sound, no sound. All right, all right, all right. I'm solving it. Sorry about my <laughs> tech issues, y'all. All I need to do tonight? is... <laughs> Where's Cooper tonight, Jacob? I don't know. I don't know. He, I texted him. He disappeared. <laughs> um, I, I did text him. He did, um... I think actually no. Uh, uh, Three Spurs boys had a show. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Like they so... had. Um, they had ATF at seven thirty in the in the evening. So that would have been about one thirty your time or twelve thirty. If you're seven. I think hours it was twelve thirty or one thirty. On I went yeah, and I hit a like. I saw him hard. live. I couldn't yeah. listen. So, um, here we go. Let me share this now. This. Yeah. Sh Tell me if you can hear this, Ellie. Okay. Let's try it again. Did you hear that? No. Nothing. Fuck. Well, I don't know why. Like, it'll share audio from your internet browser, but it won't. I can't hear anything. Y'all can't hear this clip. No. I mean, you're not the only one. A few people saying that they couldn't hear it. Yeah. No sound. Yeah, everyone's saying no sound. Robin says sound was fine, but I think Robin is usually here trolling me. So they're probably <laughs> <laughs> trying to troll me. Um, let's see. Okay, if I can't play it that way. <sighs> hey, there's Kuva. He says, I'm here. Just had some quality time hey? with my sons and didn't look at WhatsApp. Sorry, Jacob. No need to apologize at all. We're just, we're there missing you on you. You're always, come on, Kuva, look at that. Come on. Kuva's, Your son's Kuva's omnipresent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ooh. dang it, man. Oh, I was really looking forward to that clip. Let me see. Yeah. Maybe I can find it on Twitter, because apparently you have to find it on, I think he tweeted it, actually. Let me try it. Let me try through his tweet, through his Twitter. Yeah. There we go. Share this. Let me edit I'll this. I'll tell you if I can hear it. Okay. You should be able to because I see the I see the audio little thing now. Um, oh, which by the way, Lamine Yamal, the sixteen year old wonder boy in Barcelona. Yeah. Have you heard of him, Ellie? You should remember he tore yeah. us apart in the preseason. Yeah. And he was like fifteen. Yeah. 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 Um <laughs> this this picture here show he's in a Tottenham Hotspur uh training gear. Wow. When he met Messi and he says my idol. Wow. So he's coming to he's coming to Tottenham confirmed. Nice. Okay, I think this is it. If we end up I think this That's is it. it. I can hear it. You heard that. Yeah. You heard that. Real quick, big up George, gift and a membership, big up George. Why are you doing? Hey, Staffy TV got gifted a membership. Big up, Staffy. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family, bro. This hat is killing me. What's up, Sod? How you doing? There's a fraud. Little sneak peek. He may be on the channel tomorrow when I bring all those Arsenal what? bozos on over. I'm not going to call them bozos to their... I'm not going to... I'm going to be <laughs> respectful as a host. Um, but for today... But for today, I will not. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> pick up sod every single time. Make sure you subscribe to the football corner. All right, let's play call, this. In, in London, we call bozos divs. <laughs> divs? Yeah, divs. You divs. <laughs> it means you're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a div because I don't know what the hell that is. Um, I'm going to teach you London talk, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to get out there. Honestly, I was trying to for yeah. that West Ham and and Newcastle match when they, it was in December. There were two home matches within four days, and that would have been the best. That would have been perfect. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's go ahead. Let's check out this expressions clip. You end up signing someone yeah. like Conor Gallagher. Yeah, I'm on following you on Twitter, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you this right now, innit? I'll unfollow you, bro. It might even block you. Bro, we had Harry Winks and Oliver Skip, innit? Yeah, we don't need. He's yeah, all right. He's good, know, innit? But, but like, we I need. I think Conor Gallagher is one of the most underrated midfielders around. Wow. Yeah. Do you... 
Do you agree with that, Ellie? Do you think Connor Gallagher is one of the most underrated midfielders around? Or do you think maybe his agency just paid enough to have Fabrizio out there twerking? Hmm. He's a good he's a good player, but he's nothing special. If we want to go to the next level, we've got to think better than him. I, I like mm. I like I like him because he's hard working and I I generally like hard working players. He doesn't score enough. He doesn't assist enough. So no, I I I I know there's better players that we can buy with sixty million pounds that they want. That's my opinion. And really, what we're doing is a couple of things: not only giving them money to play with, but also helping them out of their FFP troubles. Because there's a whole yeah, bunch of FFP nonsense going them. on, and I think they need yeah. 110 million of sales, and selling a homegrown would would bolster that. So. Or I think that that end up that makes him able to use that money immediately because it's like t- part of that profitability. I don't know what the fuck, honestly, Ellie. I don't I really know about all the money rules, but all I know is I've heard people who do know about the money rules say that it, they need to sell and they need to sell big, or else yeah. they're going to be in big, big trouble. And I've heard that even the Premier League is looking at smashing down. I mean, obviously Nottingham Forest they got a four point deduction. Uh, Leicester yeah. City is getting a deduction, I believe, from or they've been charged by the Premier League, so that means soon they're going to be deducted points, and they may not yeah. even get promoted. FF, they're cracking down on on all the naughties. Yeah, it's kind of they interesting. Um, but I'll, but I'm sorry, I got distracted. SA. I was talking about Connor Gallagher. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I'd rather have Eze than Connor Gallagher. He's much more skillful. He's classy, and um, mm. I didn't know if you saw those pictures where he was hanging out with Sonny. Um, yeah, the Burberry, Burberry of him. Yeah, he looked quite mm-hmm. far, didn't he? Yeah, I think. And they were. And did you see after the game? The you see after the game yeah. as well. He was yeah. hugging and they talking were and. To him like mm-hmm. he's going to come to Spurs. He was born to play for Spurs. That boy. Okay, he was born to play because he was yeah, at my husband's Yeah, I agree. As he and Lily White he is just Kusiyama. that's. I, I feel like nature has intended for that to be a thing, just like. James Madison, I feel like it's inevitable. He's got to play for us. Um, yeah. But let, let's see here. Uh, for me, Connor Gallagher would be an improvement on Hoybier and Oliver Skip, but I don't know that it's an improvement on Saar or Basuma, personally. No. So I, that, that, that to me doesn't lend me to say, oh, we should jump at this, we should do this. And also, even if he was as good as Saar, which I don't think he is, we're still giving money to a fucking rival to help stay alive. Fuck them. Let them drown yeah. is my thought. Um, yeah, I mean, it. shout out to all the Chelsea fans who do tune into the show. I love you as people. Um, but for your club, I want nothing more than to see that little lion struggling in the river with alligators. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's see what else they say here. So, so Fabrizio's doing his little prop for Gallagher and expressions. I love expressions. Telling it as it is. When they talk about real fans, they need to mention expressions. But, like, we I need... think Conor Gallagher is one of the most underrated midfielders around. Wow. Yeah. Do you believe Definitely. that Tottenham are going to make the team all one a transfer permanent as well? Because if you say I yes, know. I'm walking off set. I think that's a possibility. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. Yeah. Right, end the stream. Yeah, yeah. Cut, cut his feed, man. <laughs> cut, cut his... Hi, Fab. It was nice, blood. Hasta la vista, my G. <laughs> <laughs> he said hasta la vista. <laughs> I love the expression. That's He's funny. So funny, man. The yeah, thing, that's the funny. That he a little alarming. Out. He seemed very quick to say it seems likely that we would pick up the Timo Werner. Ellie, are yeah. you picking? I don't know. I haven't I haven't asked you this. I've, I've asked Kuva about five times in the last <laughs> three weeks. I've asked <laughs> Paul a couple times. Timo Werner, if the season ends right now, are you signing him? No. With four GA and eight appearances. <laughs> no. Because I don't care about the stats. He's he he's just um he's not good enough. Right? Mm, and he's not gonna be the answer. And I don't think we should even have him as a squad player because we can get better squad players. I, I want our club to think more um bigger signings in terms of what they can offer you. He he misses so many Jacob, he could have scored 20 goals for us in those five, six appearances that he's had. But he's missed a load of chances. And I know his general play is okay. You know, he's not 
he doesn't set the stadium alight. But no, I don't know. I, I want better because if we're going to be a creme de la creme football club, then we have to think better than him. Mm, I agree. I agree. Yeah, he's um, not good enough. Also, for me, I always I said it from the jump when when we did the deal for Timo Werner. I said this to me sounds like just an easy, warm body stop gap while Sonny's away on yeah. Asian Games. It's kind of yeah. how I initially saw it. That's what and it is. when we have our choice of the starting eleven, I think that that would mirror the same sentiment from Ange Postecoglou. At least he rates Brendan Johnson as a left winger more than Timo Werner. Um, yeah, you saw he started. He, he did that versus Villa, and he had the choice. Yeah. You could have put anyone out there, Timo Werner included, who's getting his GA or whatever. Um, yeah, but well, I, I think got it's the call, a... didn't he? He got the call against Villa, and he got the call against Fulham, and he played. He played really well against Villa, and he played. The I thought that was his best game. Fulham. I thought that was Brendan it Johnson's best game, game in a Tottenham Hotspur shirt. Hundred percent. 100% versus Villa, he, was he wasn't afraid yeah. of Matty Cash. He wasn't afraid to get stuck in. And I was like, okay, first one there yeah. in the fight. Okay, I saw some yeah. physicality, some a little bit of that, yeah. uh -huh, a little bit of that dog. You know what I mean? I a little bit of that. So it's I thought, Crystal hey, Palace when he came on, very good. He he won the battle with Anderson, who's a big lad, and he he won the battle and he got the cross across for Werner to score. So hmm. he deserved to be in, but now now he's played really badly against Fulham. Let's see what Postecoglou does. Whether he keeps him It'll in be interesting to see Werner. what he does do. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be but I, I don't see Werner I don't see us picking that up. I hope we don't. I don't think he's good enough. I know that no. you know some people will say fifteen mil for a backup winger is not really a bad deal. I'd rather take no. that fifteen and, and throw it up to to Put it on a, a release. I think Nico Williams has like a forty-five million dollar release clause or sixty million yeah, release clause, something like that. that. I'd rather take that yeah. fifteen, <laughs> spend a little bit more, and then get yeah. a, a a a better winger with more of an upside. Some people have doubts about. Um, some people have doubts about that, but it's it's. Uh, well, Kate says Zuba yeah. Mendy. She likes Zuba Mendy. Yeah, you heard of him. I, I've heard of him. I've heard of, of him in in a lot. Um, apparently, Arsenal are in for him because they want to have yeah, Rice right. and Zuba Mendy with Odegaard. Oh my god! That's what I heard. Which They've I hope that that doesn't happen. Him then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but I, I, I'd like us to get Eze and possibly Grealish if he's unhappy at Man City because we were going to sign him and Levy didn't put the other five million pound down and we lost him. So I'd love to have Jack Grealish, very talented footballer and strong on the wing, can cross the ball. He's, he's for, well, I just think he's he's an upgrade on Kulusevski. Kulusevski, sorry, he's, he's flattered to deceive a lot of this season. I do like him. I do like yeah. him. Some matches I really like Kulusevski and other matches I think, what are you doing, Kulu? Get it. Don't go down the line on your right foot because you're going to check back anyway. So you might as well get a quick cross across rather than passing it to Poro. Yeah, do what you do. What he did when the first seven, eight matches when he first came to the club, he was fabulous. But like you look at yeah. Kulusevski's stats and they're bloody good. I just, I, just I don't see him as a winger. I mean, take this with a grain of salt. It's just my my opinion here, a dude in Texas. I just don't see him. I don't like his profile as a winger. I don't. I don't think that he offers a vertical threat on the on the wings. I don't think when he touches that chalk line, that defenders are like, oh, he's he's going to go around me. His best option is to cut in and try and like beat you by going around you in that sense by using the inside route and to me that's just there's no joy when you cut on the inside as a winger so to me i just never see how it's going to work and i thought whenever he was there as madison's backup so to speak playing that that advanced midfielder role 
I kind of mm-hmm. liked it and I thought this was his future there. And then I saw him getting bodied in the midfield by people, getting out physical one week, and then the next yeah. week he was bodying people in the mid. It just doesn't make sense. I feel like I this know. guy, he's just I don't know what to make of him. One minute I'm playing LeBron James clips because he's dunking on City. They brought Nathan <laughs> Ake in to substitute because fucking Josh Covardi all was getting turned around by Brennan Janssen. And then Kulisevsky dunks on his replacement. And I do the whole LeBron James. And I loved it. I've got the clip right here. LeBron James. LeBron James. Exactly. I, I love it. You know, but then the next week he's getting dunked on. And he's looking like yeah. a weakling. And, and he's getting overrun in the midfield. And it's just like, bro, who is this guy? I don't know what to expect from him. But look, real quick, we have gone over an hour on the show. So do me a favor real quick. Make sure you do like the video first and foremost. And make sure you are voting in the poll. Or don't. It is your God-given right to do whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, but we've got another guest. We've got another guest. Big up. It's Phil. How's it going? You right? What's going on, man? How's it How going? You doing? Yeah, all right. All right. I know you too. How's it going, Ellie? Hello, Phil. You all right? Cannot complain. Yeah. Good, good, good. I'm no Coover. Coover's a legend, but you know you got me, but. <laughs> hey well big up it's always good to have you in the house phil you know yeah, I, I like to drop you to invites it. whenever i can get a quick word from you look we were talking about a few things before you got here i don't know how much you heard uh but one of it was um connor gallagher yeah His rumors just won't go away fabrizio romano's twerking for him talking to expressions we were watching a little clip about it phil for mm-hmm. you is Connor Gallagher of the quality level that we should be pursuing in the summer? Or is there someone, is there some, then even someone, do you believe that there should be something better out there uh, for the money? Cause surely we shouldn't be helping a fucking London rival. Yeah. Um, Gallagher. I've never been a big fan of Gallagher, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think we need um, a ball winning, ball winning midfielder um, and someone who can dictate the play in midfield from the sixth position. I don't think Gallagher has got the qualities for that. He works hard in midfield, you know, I'll give him that. Um, and he, you know, he bags a goal or two, but I don't think he's the, the same level as a Paulinia or, you know, that kind of, that kind of player, that kind of bilk. So yeah, for me, no, no. <laughs> the, <laughs> sorry. At the end sorry of that. about that. You know, it's funny because you and Expressions share share the same sentiment. You and Expressions do. And um, let me do this. It's like Paulinho is the man and Gallagher is the boy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He he destroys everything in his way, Paulinho does. He's he's, he's quality midfielder. I I think he will go to Bayern Munich because he was going to go there. Um, in yeah. the last transfer window, last minute, but um, it it didn't pull through. So I think he probably will end up at Bayern. But yeah, if we end up going for him um, and we sort of yeah. somehow get him over the line, that'll be a brilliant, yeah. brilliant boy. He's Do like you know who Shane McMahon is? <laughs> Shane McMahon, Robin the Wolfram, rest, who's usually wrestler. here trolling me, says Phil Coy's looks like a healthier Shane McMahon. <laughs> I don't know who uh, Shane McMahon uh, is, but he says uh, healthier, he's, so that's got to yeah. be a compliment. Oh, thanks for that. Cheers, cheers for that, mate. Nice one. <laughs> yeah, um, he's, hey, he said he's something wrestler, nice about you. He's, he's, I don't, Robin's never been here, been nice to me. Hopefully, they're hitting the like either way. Um, even if you are here to troll me, Jay Ashraf says, Jacob, if we sign Gallagher, he will just get the same stick as Johnson is getting fifty mil plus. He just passes sideways. Interesting take. I, I don't think you're wrong either. Um, Gallagher is a Chelsea scum. Don't want him. Rather spend the money on a Paulinho, says Destiny. To be to Jim be fair, Manage Jacob. WWE. I mean, yeah. Gallagher. He's, he's going to cost about 60, 60 mil. You know, I think we can get better than that for that for that price. I, I really agree. do. Yeah, I agree with you. I I do agree with you there. Sorry, I was I had a message from Staffy. He he told me check check WhatsApp like an hour ago. Um, <laughs> Shane McMahon is the WWE dude. I thought that was Vince McMahon. 
Yeah, that's Bob his dad. That's his dad. Vince McMahon's oh, his dad. Yeah. So Shane is the son. Well, that's yeah. good. at least the younger version. Um, I heard Vince oh, McMahon yeah. has done some done some shady things too. So uh, oh, hopefully right, Shane. Phil, yeah. Everybody <laughs> says that I look like M Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, cursor, cursor, the Chelsea fan. He comes in here. He likes to say that as well. Uh, big up, Ben Kaufman, the longest-standing YouTube <laughs> chat member there is. Member for eleven months. He used his entire eleven-month anniversary uh, comment to just send us a purple heart. Isn't that very sweet? Big up, the mod, the some, mod father. Let's here's some in. hearts for you. I was tuning in to see that Heinz Godfather sauce the other day. I did watch that one on playback, Ben. Because I was like, what is this? What is this sauce all about? We got Ben, hope you're doing well. <laughs> was that Ben? Yeah. Isn't it supposed to be followed by a gold one? Yeah, you should have a gold one. Come on, Ben, give us the gold one. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't give um, us a yeah, to me, purple one and leave us hanging. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree with you, Phil, in regards to the price tag. For 60 mil, you could go out there and you could do a lot in a lot of different positions. Even even yeah. if it is the, to me he's not even being played as a deep lying six with Pochettino. He's more you, like an eight or a ten for them. You, and so you could get a Zub yeah, you could get a Zubin Mendy for that as well. You know, you around, around that sort 60? of price. I think I think so. Yeah. Even if it was twenty million more, Zubin Mendy's you would yeah, you could yeah. argue is but, the the. The yeah. potential there would be higher than what we've seen from Conor Gallagher. At least I but, like Conor Gallagher when he was at Palace for what it's worth. Yeah, do, he, he's do, he's doing all right at Chelsea. I, I'll give him that. He's, he's he's he ain't doing a bad job. I, I just think I don't think he suits our system. I've, I've heard a few people say he does, but I, I can't see him su uh, suiting and fitting into our system. To be honest with you, but yeah, you know, well, I'll, he'll, I'll, he'll I'll do the thing that I'll Ainge likes, which is run a whole bunch. Ainge likes yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, big up George, gifting another membership, further becoming a sponsor on tonight's episode i do appreciate that my friend davo was gifted a member by george big up dave O, getting gifted big that up. membership there uh big up mark cook good to see you in the house uh and this is talk this is a liverpool fan says 60 million for a cobham boy laugh my ass off i swear there's so much better on the market i agree with yeah. that um, anthony robinson he's howling he's having a howler of an evening so far from what i've seen from a United States standpoint, but for me, he was the player of the match versus Fulham, and he's being linked. He has a thirty-five million dollar release clause, and he's being linked mm. to Liverpool now. And I threw out on Twitter today that I think we should go and get him thirty-five mm. mil to challenge yeah. Destiny for that. I think Destiny's the best left back in the league. Don't get it twisted, but I think that if you're sitting there and you're like oh, ben davies he has no fucking way this guy's gonna take my job i mean it's that's a, a little bit different than an anthony robinson but, yeah Go ahead. i mean it's a step up for him um would he want to be on the bench would he you know a doji's gonna be in that left back spot you know until until someone better comes in but i can't see anyone better coming in than than a doji to be honest with you um but yeah i mean yeah if if he's if he's willing to to come to tottenham um being a you know a squad player then i'm all for it i'm all for it but the, the thing uh, there was something i said that or someone i heard i don't remember so shout out whoever the fuck <laughs> wait wait a second this fraud is a halftime analyst he was just coaching leads jesse marsh he's yeah. on the panel of this halftime show uh, the ex-leads okay. ex -leads. Ex -leads -leads guy yeah, he, yeah. he literally set american managers back 10 years this this fucking guy and now i just looked down i was like that looks like that old leeds manager where is he now fraud. is he is he coaching anyone at the minute i would assume it, no he's because he's holding a microphone like this that says <laughs> paramount plus on it and he's like yada yada i'm a fucking analyst yeah, get uh, me a so job. that would lead me to believe he's unemployed <laughs> at this moment. And they said, "Hey, you want to come be a halftime performer at the U.S. Men's National Team?" What, what, what uh, game is that, Jacob? Um, USA, uh, USA it, it versus Cup. Jamaica. Is it a World Cup qualifier? Is it? Or what? It is Concacaf Nations League semi-final. Ah, okay. And we are losing one nil. Jamaicans scored in thirty-five seconds. So <laughs> when they, they they kicked off, wow. and thirty-five seconds later, who did they play? Scored. Jamaica. 
Yeah. yeah. Jamaican me crazy. Um, big up, yeah. ball being counter. Yeah. Going to the Luton match for my little bro's first game. Please. Sorry, Ellie. Uh, ball being counter real quick says, uh, member for three months. Go, uh, big up, ball being for being a member for that long. Says, going to the Luton match for my little brother's first game. Please win. Yeah. Please win. Yeah. Please hope, win. Ellie, hope, you're going to be at that game win. too, right? Yeah. We should beat Luton. Come on. They're, Are they're, you going to be there, not a bad Ellie? Team. I'm going to be there, yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm going to oh. go to the Spurs ladies game as well because we've got to the semi final of the FA Cup, the women's FA Cup. We're playing Leicester and then it's the North London derby. Come on. Yeah. I come can't on. Wait mm. for that one. We're in the semi final, aren't we? With, with the yeah, ladies, we're in the semi finals made history. Yeah. 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 Wow. My old team. Totally come on, go all the way. Come on, you ladies. Hey, I'll someone say, Ellie. <laughs> someone say, Ellie, um, they are where they are because you were where you were. How about that? Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna take that. I'm, there, I'm yeah. there for the Forest game. I've got tickets for that. Oh, hell yeah. What do y'all think yeah. about loot? Y'all think? Yeah. I, I don't even have this as part of the <laughs> manifesto to speak about, but I, like I follow any fucking schedule or anything. Um, they've been so unlucky, right? They were three 0 up at Bournemouth, and they got beat four three. See, that's yeah. a bit of oh, liberty, isn't it? But Luton are a good that, side. They're yeah, good. They're a pretty good team. They're a pretty good yeah. team. They're not bad, and they fight for the ball. We have to be on our game to beat them. And no, the no leaders part. needed. Yeah. League leaders had needed a game-winning goal in extra time to beat them. At yeah. the Kenilworth Road, so yeah. for what it's worth, they're able to. I mean, Forest, they're pretty good. Forest have um, they've got that points deduction now as well. So yeah, so they've effectively Luke, gone below. Them. Yeah, yeah. Luke, so Luke Luke that, for their this lives. is an aspect, Phil. Let me let me throw it to you. Uh, this mm. is an aspect many people have said. Luton are going to be supercharged for this game. They're going to be so up for yeah. it because one, they know they can get at us. We're going to play so open. The first time we played them, remember they almost went up one nil with Adarabio missing a, a a sitter in front of our own net. I think it was. Yeah. They cross it to him. Nobody on him. Far post. Nobody on him, and he he just skied it. I think it was. So for me, I think he's their top goal scorer as well. So he's a bit of a handful that out of I'd, bio. I'd yeah, he had yeah, like yeah. A, he had like four goals in one. I was watching him last season, and I was really impressed with the way he played in the playoffs last season. Um, yeah. to come up, I I was really uh, I, I admired him at that point, and then I was like, let's see how he does in the Premier League. I mean, he's not the youngest guy; he's about twenty four, twenty five, something like that. So he's not I that young, he's, yeah. but he's not I think that he's old. A, he's, He's injured at the moment, though. I think he hasn't been playing the last couple of games, so he may be missing some on. top. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, he did I miss some time. I think. So yeah, I, I think he's missed the last couple. He might have been on the bench actually, but he did, I don't think he come on um, in that four-three game. From my understanding, but sixty goals, Luton. Their last game, he did not come on, and he is listed as doubtful so he might be yeah. close to coming back hopefully yeah. he, not it's international break player. isn't it so yeah yeah he'll probably heal up <laughs> big up robin says you're jealous jacob you just wish basuma would score last minute winners i do uh, of course i do who doesn't want their guy to score a last minute winner um <laughs> yeah uh big up jess <laughs> smash the cool. likes big up cool. yes cool. make sure you subscribe to jess um good content creator over there uh, go support all your good content creators. Out there. Is not a goal scorer though. He, he's hardly ever scored in his whole career. But how did he hit that? How yeah. did he hit that worldie against us when he played for Brighton? You know what I mean? I was at that game as well. That was in the uh, these my, yeah, that was a. I mean, I'll was never was, Basuma, I it was, was second goal of the season? That was it. <laughs> yeah, was was Basuma playing in a different position at Brighton though? I mean, was he was he a deep line playmaker at Brighton, he was. or was he that eight? He was you know. a deep line, but he was more. He was in between, Phil. He yeah, he can like, Yeah. He used yeah, to what Ellie's saying because he he would out of possession. Eight. He was very far back, but yeah. in transition he would get forward. And I remember the if I remember correctly. Now nah, I probably am fucking it up, but if I remember correctly, and the goal that he scored against us when he played for Brighton, it was him 
conduct in that match specifically i can't speak for the whole season but in that match specifically i remember him he was conducting when they had the ball yeah we were, we, we were i think it was who was it jose Mourinho was our manager and we like to yeah. sit back i remember we just allowed teams to play in front of us but, and we'd catch them on yeah. the counter and he, he was, was like their quarterback in our half when they had the ball in our half he was sitting there lining up shots lining up and then he just kind of crept forward crept forward but he, he the was, ball, bang yeah yeah he was dictating play further forward as well and he was playing yeah. through balls to be attacking players as well but from what i remember so, so I, i'm I saying think... that that basuma I loved it. The first nine matches of this season, I thought we were getting a even better version of that yeah. Brighton Basuma. But yeah. since then, I don't know if you since remember, his red right? cards, it's kind of not been. Mm. That, Go ahead, that FA Cup game, game he scored, but the game before, or was it after? I think it was after. They beat us 1 0 and Trossard scored in the last minute. And he yeah. bossed Harry Kane. He actually bossed Harry Kane from mm. that deep line. Defense, but we haven't seen that from him for no. us. So it is in him. He's just lost confidence, the boy. I don't know what's going on in his mind, but he's just yeah. Because that first ten game. games, that first ten games, he was bossing the midfield. Every you know, yeah. but he, but he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't like dictating play like from deep. He was playing further forward in them he ten games as well. Forward, so yeah. I, I don't know. He just seems to be playing within himself at the minute. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> oh, don't do say you, that. Do you remember it's early on in the season he was in the? Backwards. Sorry, Ali, mm. could you repeat that? He passes sideways and backwards. That's not mm. Basuma's game. Basuma's game is to pick up the ball and drive with and it and carry. Yeah, yeah. He's a carrier. He's a ball carrier. Yeah. And it's like he prefers, he loves, like his favorite number is eight. You know, he wants to be that eight. But yeah. it's like, and, and then Ainge, anytime it's brought up, he's like, oh, I, I, I want to get away from numbers and I want to talk about midfielders who can play for me. And so it kind of like doesn't help because when we're trying to say this guy's this or that, and Ainge is over here saying, I give a shit about them numbers. You know what I mean? I just yeah. like when they with Papa Sar, they did that whole like, is he, do you see him as a six or do you see him as an eight? He's like, at times he's going to be a six, at times he's going to be an eight, and at times he's going to be a 10. That's how I want mm -hmm. my midfielders to play. I hope we get away from these numbers and we start talking about midfielders that can just play for me. So, but if, if we, if we, Jake, look, I don't, I don't think we've got a midfielder who actually loves winning the ball back. I don't. I don't think we've got that like Kante, like that Ingo, Ingolo Kante, who who really yeah. wants to just win the ball back, and that that's all. That's all he all he does, um, yeah. and that's that's his that's his strength. Well, I, I don't think we've got that in midfield. I think we've got too many samey samey players in midfield yeah. that do the same job. Um, like and don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. All our midfielders are are quality midfielders. They just. They're not clicking at the minute, but I don't. Yeah. I don't think we have actually got a ball winning midfielder who specialises in that. So I think Van de Ven's going to be back for the loot of match. I reckon. So we'll be. Yeah. If he's back, we're going to win that match. Because we, I think we've lost one match when we started. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I was just looking at the league, right? And we scored 59 goals and conceded forty two. And Newcastle have scored 59 because they've got eight against Sheffield United. And they've only conceded 48. So they're not even far behind us, but they're far behind us on points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Van der Ven is so vital to, to our team. Well, I mean, so vital. Like. What I would say about so, Fulham, so what I would say about Fulham at least, is I think a lot of people have underestimated them, myself included, especially the morning of. I was like, <laughs> It's looting, baby. Well, look at what we just did to Aston Villa. Come on now. Talk to me nicely. We're going to go out there and put that on them. That's I how I felt. I said 4 nil, Jake. I said 4 nil. I said 4 1. I said, I, I said 4 I, 1. I was like, I we're going to concede we gonna go because of Dama Traore. They didn't even need a Dama Traore to beat us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I didn't even come on the Dama Traore goal. I'm not going to lie. What's the shame, right? Fulham have only scored 43, but they've lit in 44. So they're not even far behind us. They're two goals. More they've conceded than us, and they've only got 38 points. If they had yeah. a striker, a proper striker, 
who's like super fit as well because they've got um, Jimenez. Jimenez, yeah. He came back from injury, so he hasn't gone to his normal height. And now they've got this Moonies from mm. Brazil. He's a find. I like the way he moves on the pitch. I don't. I don't at all, Ellie. <laughs> We've got Broya. We've got Broya as well. Fuck Frankie Munez's little brother. I don't care about that bastard. I don't like him at all. I don't no, like I Colombian just, fraud. Against us. <laughs> yeah, fuck him. I hate that guy. Him, who the f- and, and Lukic, number 28, apparently he played yeah. it like how I want Basuma to play. And who the fuck is Lukic? You no know, one wakes what, up and exactly says, Mom, for my birthday, can you go I've buy me a Lukic 28 shirt from Fulham? Mom, I want a Lukic shirt for Christmas, please. <laughs> Nobody ever said that in their life. No. And here he I is could. fucking scoring against this knee sliding. He scored with his knee. Oh, no. <laughs> I said that to my husband. I goes, who's bloody Lukic? Never heard of him. Who the, that's, that's my watch along. Who the fuck is Lukic? That's yeah. why I kept screaming. I said, no one knows who that is. Also, Castagne, Cascante, the played fucking Leicester, Cascante. Yeah. yeah, he played. For, someone corrected me. He was like, well, he played for Leicester. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. quite deep. Yeah, but, but I, yeah, Bob, so. I'll tell you what, that morning of, I didn't know who the fuck Castagne was. I didn't know who Cascante, <laughs> Cascante, who the fuck is this guy? Maybe 10 <laughs> people in their life said, let me get a, a Castagne shirt. But I tell you, I damn sure ain't one of them. Ain't no one repping no Castagne. I'll tell you, I'll tell you who I was impressed with though. Um, who we've been linked with was Tosin. Tosin had Ad- the Yeah, he looked a good. He looked a good player. He played well against him and us. Calvin Bessie. Calvin Bessie, mm. if you remember, he he had two mistakes that led to our two goals when we beat Fulham two 0 So mm. he had a, he had a much improved match, I thought too. Uh, big up yeah. George, reminding everyone, smash that like button, please. Smash that like button. How many likes? How many votes do we got? We got 97 votes and 63 likes. This is the conversion rate. We're going to need to move more like Sun and less like. Let's get them likes up, people. Less like Timo Werner. Yeah. Um, Indian like Gunner here's got a question. Jacob, Spurs win the league or USA wins the World Cup? Uh-huh. I will tell you, one will make me cry and one will make me say, nice. That's cool. Very cool. Doesn't. And I'll tell you. If Tottenham won the league, oh, oh no, oh Indian Gooner, you don't want to see me. No, <laughs> nobody will want to see me except Spurs fans. I promise you that. I, yeah. I I will scream my way across that fucking ocean, buck ass <laughs> naked if I have to, and I will be there for the celebrations. You can guarantee. But I'll tell you, the World I'll Cup. Be I'll be I'll be there going down Tottenham High Road definitely. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I would be. For- oh, I would, no, bro. The people would be like, "Is Jacob on this YouTube show? If so, I can't be on it. I can't be on it. I can't watch it because I will be the worst. I will be the last motherfucker you want to see. You'll probably want to go see your mother-in-law before you see me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I will be that guy, the worst. There ain't Thanks, nothing sir. anybody could say to me. Because I'd be like, what? I don't hear you from all the way the fuck down there. All right? Because I was there once. But I don't hear you anymore. Oh, that would be. And no one could say shit. They couldn't be like, oh, it was just one leak. Fuck you, bro. I don't care. That's it. I'll I'll just be Um, saying, Spursy. Spursy. I know. <laughs> hey, bring, remember that that, yeah. that word Spursy, and this is I have a, pro, a I, word. a little bit like if I may go on a little bit of a tangent here about the word Spursy. It was uh, originated as a word to describe winning the double. <laughs> oh, that's Spursy. They went and won the double. Yeah. And <laughs> to me, what's the, tra- what's the treble then? If we, if, you know. <laughs> If we won the treble, what would that be? <laughs> the treble is. <laughs> Manchester, right, you... I guess, because City and United are the only ones. Jacob, right? I lived, right, round the corner from Tottenham Town Hall, my road, Beaconsfield Road, right? I would walk up my road, um, and it's like a stone's throw away, and there's a tree that was my family's tree, and we all used to climb it when we won trophies. Right, and I was a little girl. My brothers lifted me up so I could see over the crowd and see Steve Perriman, see Alan Gilzine, see um, Dave Mackay, Jimmy Greaves, 
all these great players we've seen lift trophies. And since Levy's taken over one trophy. Yeah. One, it's extreme not even one, other, one extreme to the other, isn't it? Yeah. And it's not, it's not even one that I think, like, you, like if we won the Carabao Cup this year, I already know what the narrative would be. It's the energy. It's the energy drink cup. I don't give a shit. Win some. <laughs> win a legitimate trophy. You know what I mean? And I know. Yeah. As I would take it. Don't get me wrong. When we lost, I so would when we lost, now, yeah. when we lost the Carabao Cup to Man City, I and seeing Sun cry. I can't lie. I I welled up a little bit. Yeah, it seeing, hurts, man. seeing my Korean king hurting that hurt me. Knowing that we were going another season, and that's what Jose was brought in to do and we didn't even allow him the fucking chance to manage that match that he got us to and that hurt too it was like everything was just shitting on me that day and and i want that back but i would say like for me i don't feel this like yes uh u.s soccer like became a big thing in like 2016 when we had a decent little run there um but for me, it's just the whole establishment is fraudulent from the head down. The mm. the U.S. Soccer Federation, the USSF, is a fraudulent. Uh, the guy who is the president of that, his last name is Burhalter. The manager's last name is Burhalter. The Burhalter brothers are having their way with U.S. men's soccer. And honestly, I could give a shit. I care less. He is the American version of Southgate if Southgate kicked his wife in the stomach. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So that'll tell you that's how I feel about this motherfucker. <laughs> I, I yeah. do not like that guy. And he's still our manager. So to me, I don't I I would not like to see him celebrate. I think he's a fucking loser and he gets by because he wears cool tennis shoes. Oh, he's got cool Nikes. Look at how fresh he is. He's got skinny jeans and Nikes. Fuck you. All right. This man kicked his wife. I don't give a damn if it was 15 years ago. News came to light. That he had a physically assaulted his spouse, oh, dear. and we said he, you're gonna get suspended. You're suspended for a couple matches, and we'll get an interim in. And now he's managing again. So for me, he's 50 mm. years old. Fuck him, bro. Born in Englewood, New Jersey, <laughs> and he was a centre back as a as a player, wasn't he? Well, he needs to get center back right in the fucking face, <laughs> in my opinion. No. Um, to me, no excuse putting your hands on a female. You're a dude. Go oh, no. fight a dude. Go find a guy and be like, let's throw down. There's a million ways Don't to handle it. your emotions when you're angry with a woman. Kicking her in the... He was a soccer player, and he kicked her in the fucking stomach. That's a weapon. You know what? So. I, was, I was looking at his career, right? He played for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams... And he played for Crystal Palace. <laughs> he actually played for Crystal Palace 19 games. He did the last job at the clubs that he's been, so he must be an arsehole. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I agree, Bobby and Counter. Sacking Jose a few days before that. Five days, specifically, before that final. I will agree. Um, but, yeah, real quick, I wanted to talk about that Spursy thing. I, what do y'all think when fans are like, Spursy, we're spur, we're we're so Spursy. To me, that's disrespectful as fuck to 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 yourself, to me, to every Tottenham fan because you're playing into a trope that rivals use to beat us over the head with. And if you can't <laughs> trust your own fucking family, who can you trust? And, and it may be dramatic, and I I want to just elaborate and Phil, I can see I think you have a little bit of a point that you want to make on it. So I want to I want to frame this in as most controversial as I can. So by saying Spursy, to me, that's feeding into a nomenclature that's been spread by people who mean to see you do to do poor. Arsenal fans yeah. want to see you do poor. Everyone around the league loves laughing at Tottenham. Oh, look at little Spurs doing their thing. You're feeding into that. And to me, it's one thing to like, okay, the reality is, yes, in a trophy sense, we're little kids compared to United, right? All the trophies they won, I get that. At this current stage where City is at and where Spurs are at, there's a stark, stark difference of where these two clubs are at and how they're regarded in the public forum. And I can understand that. But for me, and there's nowhere that I've ever gone where I've like, A, not told the truth or B, not tried to defend my club. Because it's like 
my fam it's like if you have a fucked up family yeah they're fucked up but that's my family that you're talking shit about so i'm gonna give you reasons why they aren't as shitty or i'm gonna present options why they're better or that what you're saying is wrong because to me that's what i do for my friends and family if i'm in a yeah. public setting and i see tottenham hotspur the club as my family it's a part of my life it's a part of yeah. my son's life it is a part of not, a little bit of my wife's life because i'm a part of her life so to me it is a part of my family and so when people are like oh spursy it's like right you're supposed to be in that spurs family and now you out there because it suits you and it makes you look better you, when you're at a dinner table full of arsenal united liverpool city right when you're at this table with them or you know and they're all shitting oh it just makes the dinner conversation go by better if i'm also shitting on my club which for me i don't i don't do that the only thing i will do is hold my hands up at the mistakes that this club has made from an administrative standpoint i.e with our mismanagement our purchasing of wrong players lack of purchasing players when pochettino got to a final these are the things i will bring like th bringing up factual information is different than going on we were spursy versus fulham to me you're you're opening the door for people to shit on and you saying yes thank you for shitting on this because i allowed you to do that what do you think phil am i being dramatic yeah. it's it's just it, it's it's football tribalism jacob but it's just you know it's football banter is the way i see it um at the end of the day um you know tottenham you know the players the manager the you know the owners they should use that name as motivation for us to win trophies you know um, and until we do win, win trophies, you know, it's been 23 years in the, in, in the, in the making. So, you know, um, until we do win trophies, it's always going to be labeled on us until we, until we change that. So, you know, um, it's, it hurts. Do you know what I mean? It does hurt because, you know, but this it's club like, deserves it, trophies. Is it just you know self-deprecating I mean? humor? Do you think that's just, what it is? Like I just a way think to it's, cope? It, it's just, it's just banter people, you know, rival clubs getting on the bandwagon but, with that name. And it's just, but, you know. But from a Spurs fan standpoint, like you as a Spurs fan, mm. you're a fan of Tottenham Hotspur. And people yeah. are using a word that was once used as a, like, yeah, we're Spursy. We won a fucking double. That's what it meant. And then it became when we started losing, oh, that's Spursy. We like that better for you. We like the, you look better in this outfit. And that's they've what they dressed the us up in. They've used the name and flipped it on exactly. the other side as a exactly. negative. <laughs> and and, you know, and it, to this day, Spurs fans are feeding <laughs> into it. That's where I'm a little mm. bit like, why don't we as Spurs fans stand up against it? And why do we feed into it? Like, it's, it, to me, it's doing the whole like, yeah, I'm, you know, I acknowledge the problems, but ah, it's just, man, I, I struggle with accepting a, a Spurs fan being like, wow, we are so Spursy. Because Spursy used to mean something different. You know what yeah. I mean? And well, what about you, Ellie? People. Well, they're, they're thick, the people that use that. They really are thick, right? Because I've, I've looked up the word, right? And you are right, um, Jacob. It says, the more modern meaning is to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory or to fall short with the prize in sight that's what the more more modern one but in the in the olden days it meant to be consistently um sorry consistently unbeatable that's what it meant yeah yeah so they can they can do one as they say in london right and i, I don't even acknowledge you know they called us they called us Spursy when we beat Atletico Madrid in Europe. They called yeah. us Spursy then too. I don't acknowledge to me, it. Uh, I just ignore them. I just, I just close my. Yeah, I'll, I'll just think it's I don't, tough. I, I don't. I don't yeah. mind rivals using that. I don't mind that at all. To me, I like that. That is banter, tribalism. I, I love that yeah. shit. I yeah. thrive in that culture. Bro, when I play any sport, I play better when the guy I'm going against. If we're talking shit. It makes yeah. me be, anyone who watches my FIFA streams, I'm one thing, but then I start hearing someone talk shit, makes you play I play better. better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just that's how so I thrive in that. But it's like 
it's just yeah. weird for me when Spurs fans are feeding into that. It's like, bro, that's what they used to beat us with. Why are you using it too? But it's you know it's out it's, it's out it's out in the it's out in the media. So you know it, you know yeah. pundits use it as well sometimes. Do you know what I mean? And it, it's, it's got it's got it's to be it's got, yeah. like the players the players must know that that goes around in the media. They must know that surely. You know, and I, I would just I, use But see, it. that's what I'm saying. Is kids have been motivation. born. Kids have been born. Lucas fucking Bergvall, since he has breathed oxygen on this earth, Spursy has been a bad thing. Yeah, see, he's, this is an <laughs> Arsenal fan. I don't mind him coming in here saying Spursy, Spursy. But when, when Tottenham fans and other people are saying, oh, Tottenham went Spursy today. Yeah. Why don't you, like, is there no other way you could talk about the club other than to feed into these tropes that – Rivals use like again. Rivals, I love it. That's what it's about. That's what that's, that's what part makes Robin, the game we'll, fun. Robin, we'll 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 see you at our at our gaff at the end of the season. Yeah, we'll see how you get on at the Tottenham. I don't stadium, care who we it. have in our eleven. I feel like we're winning that. It, how much oh, it yeah. means to them and where point. we're at, we're gonna fuck them up. I've gone on record yeah. saying we are winning. We are winning that North London Derby. Yeah. Yes, Robin. We should we'll we should we should have beat them at their ground. Yeah. In the 2-2, two -two, we, we, yeah. we were the much better side. Enough. Yeah, we should have. We played them off the field. Yeah. Mud FC, I agree. Until we start winning, nothing changes. I agree. But for the right now, until next season when we can go again and challenge for something, until then, between now and then, if we fuck up, like, we didn't... We didn't like what, what Ellie just said. Even in today's definition of the word Spursy, it is to lose essentially when you were supposed to win. Yeah, we went down one nil. We we're supposed you. You would argue from a scoreline standpoint, you don't win that two nil, three nil. You don't win that. So to me, that wasn't Spursy. We just sucked. We were ass cheeks. Say that. <laughs> say all the players let us down. You know, say something. Yeah. But it's like if a Spur if a Spurs fan is saying we're Spursy, then that's just like keeps it alive forever. I think, I, agree, it's, not I, think it's, I think it's the sound of the word though, Jacob. Do you know what I mean? It's like Spursy. It's like it's you annoying. It's, it's, anno it. it's annoying, annoying, isn't it? Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's, annoying <laughs> word. You know, but I just let it go of my head. I do. You know. Yeah, but, I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, uh, Bobby Encounter says either Ainge breaks the curse or the curse breaks him. Only two outcomes. And I actually agree with that. Normally, I don't like when people say there's only two outcomes here, but I do agree. Um, mm -hmm. To be fair, there were some of the curses that got broken this season, and then we reverted back to type. Is that Spursy? Yeah, this is a good mm -hmm. point, Barry Shuttleworth. I did forget about that. Kulu mentioned the word Spursy in the, in the letter to the fans. He did mention that. So they yeah. are aware. Yeah. Everyone's of aware. Of be it, aware. But, yeah. But look, this has been a great show. Um, we're almost on two hours, which is crazy. I told my wife for sure we weren't going to do two hours, but we almost went there. Um, so real quick, let me say thank you again to tonight's sponsors of the show. And no, it is not any kind of corporation. It is you beautiful, sexy bastards in the chat, starting with Moondog and then going to AMD with a very, very large, very, very generous donation from a Arsenal fan, just a good guy. He's also bought uh, my, my unborn daughter some clothes. So AMD oh, is one of the real, exactly. he's a very good guy. The registry for, uh, for my daughter is in the description of this video. Um, and he went he got, and he, he went and bought her some clothes off there. So big up AMD for that. I appreciate that. And I appreciate this donation. Uh, he is a good guy, even though he made a wrong decision by supporting Arsenal, he is still a good guy. So big up George as well, gifting one and two memberships tonight i do appreciate that okay. thank you very much um and then also big up ben kaufman for being the longest standing youtube chat member in the history of this channel a member for 11 months and we do appreciate all 11 of those months ball being counter uh being a member for three months and going to the game with his with his little brother <laughs> hopefully we don't make your brother cry that's the hope isn't it but look we move on phil you got any final words before we say goodnight? Um, no, it's just, it's been a good stream. Thanks for thanks for having me having me on. Um, lovely to speak to you and Ellie. Um, and and yeah, you know, just keep believing, believing this manager. 
Um, I don't know if I don't know if we should say believe in the owners because you know, um, yeah, that, that's a bit wrong to say. To be honest, we are. I'm, well, I'm not, not the, fan owners. Of the owners. But, not, not, I would say not the owners. Scott yeah. Munn and the other fuckers in charge because the recruitment there has, team. Yeah. There's there's yeah. more people between Daniel Levy and the footballing decision. So yeah. my hope, this is where my hope I have no hope in He's the, stepping in the away ownership from that. in that sense. I'm hoping. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, we change him. We shift him. The Papa Matasara, yeah. Destiny Udogi, the buy, loan him back, get him back, and now look at him. That's yeah. worked. Mickey Vanderman's Sprinkle, worked. Vicario's worked. Say, yeah, sprinkle it's, a little bit of stardust in the summer. Get get a few, you know, quality players in. You know, we we ain't too far away, I don't think. I think we're about five or six players, you know, um, four players that are pure quality um, yeah. and a couple that are squad players. I don't yeah. think we're too or far challenge. away. So. I want, I want that. I don't want squad level. I, I, I feel like we've got squad level. We got Richarlison's. We got these, these yeah, but you got levels. you got the you got like the Brian Hills and you got the skips and stuff like that that we need to ship out sort of yeah and then oh, bring yeah. them in bring them in with with upgrades but we need we need some marquee signings in this club I believe and uh, that will get us to the that next level to to challenge for many, major honors so yeah believe in the team believe in this manager I, I certainly do anyway so. You know, I believe in the manager. Up. I'll tell you that much. I definitely yeah. have hope, and I believe in this manager one hundred percent. Fulham was a little, of little Fulham was a little hump in the road, so you know this we get back to winning pace, ways. Phil. We knew yeah. this would happen. We knew yeah. there was going to yeah. be results that we should drop, that we we've, should win where we drop, and we've gotten results where maybe we shouldn't have. We've lost. We've lost half the it's games the of last year. We've only lost seven games or eight games, I believe. So, you know. Um, we lost about 14 last season, 15. So that's crazy. Real quick, you big know. up rack, rack dose madness. Big up rack becoming a member of the lover's lane. He wasn't gifted. He went and grabbed it. He said, I'm a sponsor tonight too. So I will say thank you for grabbing your membership. Hope to see you on the members call in. We'll, we'll sort that next week at some point. I think in the middle of the week, at some point, uh, life pending, obviously if my daughter's born, I'm going to take some time away, but pending that, the doctors did say have the have the hospital bag ready because at any moment between now and in the next three to four weeks, she gonna be here. So I've been working like a dog, getting everything ready, got rearranging, <laughs> I've, I'm fixing up a car and shit. It's crazy. It's been crazy out here. But thank you, Rakdos. I'm looking to do a members hangout, not a call in because I don't do one on ones. I don't think I'm special enough. I do member hangouts where we all just get together. We hang out on stream, talk about whatever the fuck. So we'll do that um, maybe this weekend or next weekend or in the week next week. But we'll be doing uh, March's edition very, very soon. So hopefully we'll see you there. I hope you're doing well. And um, big up for grabbing that membership. Thank you so much. Hope you're too blessed to be stressed. Ellie, you got any final words before we get on out of here? Yeah, um, I just want to say... Um... Keep faith in Ange Postacoglu. I echo what Phil said. And we only, have, we only have to win another eight points to better last season's performance because we finished on 60 points and we're currently on 53. And we, we scored 70 last season and 53 in. So I think we're going to better those two targets as well. Um, so it, it's, it's an up, upward project, projection with Spurs. And, and the last thing I want to say, the first picture of your new baby girl, I want to see, it with a, see your baby in a first baby girl. There you go. That's <laughs> got to be the first picture. Yay! Hey, oh there we go. Oh, my God. Get oh, I got it ready. Uh, you, thought it. I, you thought we were playing out here. <laughs> you thought I'm playing. Come on, look at that. Man. Come on, man. Get in. My wife this morning said, you better pack your hospital bag. I said, Almost packed, baby. We almost <laughs> packed. Come on now. Woo! I can't wait. I also got uh I also All got the another best, one. Man. So nice Yeah, one. yeah. Uh oh, before we end as well, Yanis with a very generous donation becoming a sponsor tonight. Uh says uh for Chewy's meds. I appreciate that, Yanis. Aww. Yeah, uh, Chewy's That's Chewy's lovely. going through a little bit of a tough time right now. Uh he's getting older. Lovely. Nature, as we know, is a unrelenting motherfucker sometimes and and unfortunately chewy is not um 
Chewie's not immune to that. So he's he's just having trouble holding the PP in. He kind he, mm. he, he lets the PP out and and he knows he's not supposed to, but he can't really help it. And so it's really weird uh, position. And I feel really bad for him. I wish he could be here. But big up, Yannis, well I appreciate soon. that. Get well soon, Chewie. Yeah. I do, hey, he's he's doing good otherwise. Like, that's really the only thing going on is he can't hold his piss. And so, I mean, I take him on walks twice a day. I take him in the morning and I take him a, at night. And and we just, during the day, I got to keep him on the back patio because I don't I can't have him just pissing everywhere. So, yeah. um, but big up Yanis. Chewy, Chewy will be back. He'll be, he'll be good. Give him a bath, get him a new bed, uh, get him, get him looked at. Maybe, you know, maybe it's something in his diet. Yeah. Who knows? We'll find out. We'll get to the bottom of it. Pick up Yanis, though. I do appreciate the becoming a sponsor. Uh, you're always here supporting as well, so I do appreciate the very much. And big up Ian. Says, big up Jacob. Have some stuff coming your way. Thank you very much. Big up Ian Ferguson. Um, and big up to you and your, your very lovely looking lady there in your photo. Hope you are well, my Cincinnati brother. Um, I will be watching the rest of this match, but USA are still down 1-0 to Jamaica. Um, but once I start watching USA will score, but look, Ellie, did I ask for your final thoughts or am I a dick? Hey, you did. You did. Oh, I did. Oh, we're good. good. We're good. We're On that note, my final it. thoughts, um, my final thoughts are let this show be proof to you. There's been over 150 people across, uh, YouTube and Twitter. So whatever you're watching on, I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate the follows, subscribes and all the sponsors of tonight's show, but also want to say, um, no matter who you support, I appreciate you being here. Because if you're here yeah. showing me love or showing me banter, you're here and that supports the channel. So thank you very much. And the channel, when you support the channel, you support me and you support my family. So I appreciate that very much. Um, so thank you. And if you don't want to spend any money, you don't got to. Just hit a like, hit a subscribe, share the video. It helps. But my final thought is uh, I'm so fucking blessed. I'm so grateful for this life that I'm afforded. And I hope you feel the same way when you wake up and you count your blessings. Because uh, I know I do. And I am oh so blessed, way too blessed to be stressed. Hence why I always say you got to talk to me nicely. Um, but we'll get, we'll be back tomorrow. I'm looking at doing a rival show. I'm gonna have me and some Arsenal people. I'm gonna get all their, get all these Arsenal people's opinions on Tottenham Hotspur. I may even bring in some fucking Tottenham fans to help me fight them. Maybe we'll have a three-on-three -three throwdown. I don't know. But it's going to be a good show. Hopefully, y'all be there. I'm going to build it out tonight and plan it out so that way y'all have it there um, on, the, on, the, on the agenda. But until next time, i.e. tomorrow, I want you to do a couple more things. But these are for you, not for me. I need you to stay blessed, stay fresh, up the lads. And as always, come on, you Spurs. <laughs> Spurs of America with your hosts Michael and Jacob.